the first ever visit of Hartford Athletic to One Oak Field with the FC Tulsa fans still fired up from that dramatic 1-0 win here last Saturday. Good evening everybody, Dave Saunders, a Big 12 champion, Anna Beffa with you and Anna, after that dramatic win, tonight's game is quite simply another must-win game. Dave, FC Tulsa have played so incredibly well these last few games and are peaking at the right time. But a slip up this late in the season could really jeopardize their hopes for their potential playoff spot. Now, last Saturday, we saw a very comprehensive defensive performance, including the form of the goalkeeper, Austin Wormel. Austin Wormel has been playing so well for FC Tulsa, and he's starting to receive recognition around the league, and rightfully so after the way he's been playing. He was voted for Team of the Week this week, but also received the league's highest weekly honor of Player of the Week. And Dave, as you can see why with this save. Yeah, this was a nomination for Save of the Week, and you can see why. Point blank save from the header from Ingram here, which kept the score and are at nil nil. But the saves, they just kept on coming. They did. Warmel currently with an 81% save percentage, which currently ranks the highest in the USL. But Dave, he continues to get better and better. He kept FC Tulsa in this game. Certainly did this save here. And of course, that paved away the way. Nil-nil late on. And substitute Machuca does the rest. Machuca comes in, makes a difference. FC Tulsa scored so many goals late in matches this year. And just the grit from this home team able to grind out these three points at home. We will be back after the break for your first half call and of course your starting lineups. It's the first ever visit Hartford Athletic here at One Oak Field. It's FC Tulsa versus Hartford Athletic. Jack is time. Left footed slots it past the keeper. It is an immediate reply. We have got a grandstand finish. What a ball over the top. You know, they're banged up, they're working hard, they're dealing with injuries. You know, I feel blessed that these guys are able to come in the office and, you know, take advantage of our multiple service lines here at Pulse Spider Rehab. Bill Knight Ford is your number one Ford dealer in Oklahoma for 13 years. And now we're proud to invite you to come and let us help you build and custom order your new Ford just the way you want it. The process is simple and it's the best way to find your perfect new vehicle. Just hand pick exactly what you're looking for and we'll make it happen. Buying a car has never been easier. So come experience the difference at Bill Knight Ford and BillKnightFord.com, 96th Memorial and home of the Knight Advantage. Matches brought to you by Tulsa Tech. Make your own path to the career of your dreams with hands-on training from Tulsa Tech. By Bank of Oklahoma, we go above so you can go beyond. By Williams, we make clean energy happen. And by Osage Casino Hotel, your place to play. Good evening, everybody. Welcome in then to One Oak Field. Let's have a look at the home starting 11. The Rib Crib home starting 11. And Anna Beffer, no Brian Brown tonight, so De Costa leads the line. Yeah, you'll see De Costa in that number nine spot. We talked about Austin Warmel in the pregame show. Player of the week this week after his seven saves versus Indy and an unbelievable save, Dave, that 
got him some recognition for a potential save of the week as well. But they we know they've been good defensively, but offensively it's been clicking for FC Tulsa. They have a lot of substitutions that can come in and make an impact. You'll see Machuca there who came in, scored that game-winning goal on Saturday for FC Tulsa. So Donovan Ricketts with a lot to work with this evening. And a welcome back to Peter Chuich as well on the bench. Let's have a look at the Foxy Tackers. Hartford Athletic 11. And we can pick out Ertl, the German, of course, in goal. Ariel Martinez, a former FC Tulsa player up front. But what about Danny Barrera? Danny Barrera, he's one to look out for for Hartford Athletic. Coming off of a season where he had eight goals and 12 assists in 2021, hasn't been able to get that kind of production this year. But still, as you mentioned, Dave, 47 chances created. So it's not a lack of creating chances, but Hartford Athletic just have to be clinical in front of goal. And that's going to be the difference for them tonight. Both teams, obviously, with hopes for playoffs. FC Tulsa focused on the three points. Hartford Athletic looking for a victory as well. We're nearly set for kickoff. Let's have a quick look at the injury report before we get underway. Sponsored by Tulsa Bone and Joint. Brian Brown, we've already mentioned, uh, is out. Abuchi Abin was not too far away. There is none on the injury list for Hartford Athletic. Welcome in, as we say, FC Tulsa versus Hartford Athletic here in the USL Championship. And it's FC Tulsa kicking from right to left on your screens in those familiar black shirts, black shorts, black socks, and the gold numbers. Here's Noah Powder flicking the ball on against Hartford Athletic in their patina green, white socks, and white shorts. You could argue right from the off, this is a must-win game for both teams, Anna. Obviously, every team goes out to win a game of football, but for different reasons, must win for both sides. Definitely Hartford Athletic currently sitting two spots at number 10 in the Eastern Conference behind FC Tulsa, who currently sits at eight. Obviously, both teams hunting for a spot in the top seven. Those teams will head into playoffs, but as you mentioned, Dave, getting late into the season, each game continues to get bigger and more important. Is Kembo Kibata, the bit busy central midfield player. Bradley Bouchoir finding South African Labour Maloto tries to thread it through to Suarez. Suarez, who's in the starting 11, came on as a, a sub on uh, numerous occasions this season. Scored a very fine goal at Miami in the 2 1 win. Here's McFarlane. Long throw here, finds Labour Maloto. Real chance uh, to get uh, De Costa in there, but just too much. But De Costa, as we said, and are playing in that real sort of number nine. Sometimes it'll be a false nine, but he's leading the line tonight. Right tonight with an opportunity for him to be closer to goal and have the chance, more shots on frame. We know he's capable of scoring, especially with players like Maloto behind him able to distribute. Andre Lewis on the ball here, feeds it into Badadi. Badadi's continued his run. Real chance here for the away side. Austin Wormel makes uh, an early save there. And just for a moment, Badadi had the freedom of the 18-yard box there, Anna, coming up from right back. Yeah, breakdown defensively for FC Tulsa, and they're not completely out of the woods yet. Continued pressure from Hartford Athletic here. Joel Johnson was involved there, but uh, Adrian Dispay can just tidy up. Kemba Kibata, good drop of the shoulder here. Little bit of space has opened up for him. Noah Powder wide on this left-hand side. FC Tulsa play with those two wing backs. The latest uh, of uh, two signings, uh, Noah Powder on the left, and uh, Cian McFarlane will play on the right. Here is Bidadi, who had that opportunity. And now a little bit of space for Lewis. Lewis finds Danny Barrera. Dispay will step in there and bring the ball over the halfway line here. The Cuban tries to find a Costa. Ball just loose here. It will go all the way back here to Ertl. Barrera just dropping deep there in the midfield, trying to pull the strings for Ray Reed's men. Here's Ariel Martinez. 88 degrees at kickoff here from our friends at Fox 23. That weather report, slightly cooler temperatures than of late. Nice and comfortable, really, you would say, for the players. His Barrera has had several touches of the ball inside this first three and a half minutes. There's Bradley Bouchoir, the central player in the back three for FC Tulsa. And the referee has given a free kick. Lively start to the game. 
Tom Bruitt can't believe that that is a foul. There's the referee, who is Christian Campo, assisted tonight by Stephen McConaughey and Ricardo Ocampo. And the fourth is Brandon Query. Here's the replay with Anna Beffer. Yeah, both teams, we talked about just a lot of energy. You see Bruitt just up, I think that elbow up over the top of DaCosta. Referee right there to call that one. Tom Bruitt, who's uh, in his 25th start of the season at the heart of the defense. That ball uh, comes off Prince. Sadie, who's playing on the left-hand side. Martinez, the number nine position at the moment. Again, we would probably say that could be a, a false nine at times. And Joel Johnson seems to have gone to the right-hand side. Nil-nil the score. You're very welcome here to One Oak Field. The first visit of Hartford Athletic. They were in town earlier on the season and the game had to be postponed due to a COVID outbreak in the FC Tulsa camp. So this is a rearranged fixture and quite timely for FC Tulsa, who in their quest for the playoffs, and let's not forget that Harford Athletic are not mathematically out of those playoff places. So you just feel they've got to win pretty much everything from now on, as have FC Tulsa, as the ball goes back from Yakubu to Yannick Ertl, the six foot two Munich born goalkeeper. Kicks that one out, two fine goalkeepers on display tonight. Of course, we've already mentioned Austin Wormel. That's Ray Reed with the arms folded there. And that man in shot is Sian McFarlane. Right on halfway on the FC Tulsa right. Throws it infield, looking for Labour Meloto. His cushioned header to Bird. Bird out to McFarlane. McFarlane goes long here, looking for Labour Meloto. Clever header from Labour Meloto. And in fact, the referee's going to go with a goal kick. I can only think that he thought the goalkeeper touched it behind the bar runner, but a clever looping header from Labour Meloto. The, the header from Meloto was great, but what I really love about that play was that late run from Meloto through the midfield. He typically finds himself in that central position, came in with the late run, a great ball in from Cian McFarlane, not able to execute there, but again, another great opportunity for FC Tulsa early on in this match. Bradley Bouchois, Ronald Rodriguez straight back to Bouchois. Bouchois returns the favor. Here's Noah Powder. Rodriguez again in field to the man born in Toronto. Kembo Kibato, good play from him, out to Sian McFarlane, the Jamaican. Steps inside, one challenge, just a little bit uh, short there, Luca Purpa takes that one up, here's Ariel Martinez now, striding down the middle of the field, one of the traits of his play is to run at the defence, gets a little push, shoots just wide of the target, and as I said, Ariel Martinez, we've seen him do it in an FC Tulsa shirt, and he does it again there, Anna, drives down the middle of the field does a great job I, th I think if you're the FC Tulsa defense you have to engage him earlier put some pressure on him so he doesn't have the ability to drive centrally with so much space FC Tulsa fortunate there that that shot is not on frame but a great run from Ariel Martinez and as you mentioned Dave FC Tulsa fans very familiar with his capabilities now Labour Malota has just got him behind here Surrounded by three defenders, tries to bring in Suarez. Suarez is hardly had a touch of the ball, not through lack of effort, just hasn't had the ball to feet. And Labour Maloto there, almost in behind the defence. McFarlane, still in his own half, Kembo Kibato, back to Bradley Bouchoir. And Dave, it's a, it's a similar start to this game as the game on Saturday for FC Tulsa in a sense because they're still getting those balls in good areas offensively but obviously in that last game on Saturday not able to score a goal until the 90th minute so I imagine Donovan Ricketts this game re-emphasizing to his team when they get in those moments and have those chances on frame have to capitalize early so you don't put yourself in a position late on in the game where you're down a goal or have to really chase the game. Joel Johnson there managing to work the ball back to Eunice Budadi. Tom Brook, the Englishman. Barrera. Yukubu. Yeah, it's been well documented that FC Tulsa on uh, 
Saturday, and I could have put the, the game to bed by half time. I mean, they had several really good opportunities, didn't they? They definitely did. And obviously, with the players that they have, those chances will continue to come. Just have to be clinical in front of goal. And Hartford Athletic, to their credit so far, Dave, have had their fair share of chances as well. So we mentioned the implications for both teams from a playoff perspective. But as this game continues to go on, you know, that first goal is crucial. Now Suarez trying to get that first goal, but he's just got a bit of a, a shove there on Gadula. Gadula going to be picked up by the referee. Gadula, I think, was asking for a card there, but it was just a, a push. Gadula, the left back, the 25-year-old, former Charleston battery man. Here's Tom Brewitt. Worthy of a card here, Anna Beffer. We'll get another look here at the replay. Dario Suarez initially will be on the intended receiving end of this pass. I don't think there's a card there, Dave. There was a little bit of contact. What are your thoughts there? I don't think that's worthy of a card. I think the referee's done the right thing there, and uh, we play on like a referee that early on will not uh, get the card out of his uh, pocket. Keep up with play. Here's Bouchoir. Suarez lays off to Eric Bird. He was just caught in possession there, but uh, De Costa does well to get it to Labour Maloto. Maloto tries to thread it through to De Costa. Now Suarez. Suarez back to Kembo Kibato. Ronald Rodriguez joins in. Good first touch from Suarez. Suarez wearing 92. Here's De Costa from 25 yards out. Curls that one high, wide and handsome. But a good build-up and certainly Labour Maloto and Dario Swalish fully involved in this game in this first, uh, what, ten and a half minutes, Anna? Yes, both very active so far in this match. And you brought up a good point on that last play, Dave. That first touch from Dario Suarez there, just the simple move of the shoulder, the turn, the open of the hips, and immediately he has space in front of him to dribble into. Those are the little moments, those technical moments that FC Tulsa has to be sharp on. And so far, when they've done that, opportunities present themselves. Bradley Bouchoir just uh, trying to head that one back to Austin Wormel. Fans, FC Tulsa will be back at One Oak Field on Saturday, August 27th to host Loudoun United FC on Throwback Night. Get your tickets to the match today at fctulsa.com slash tickets. The referee is uh, blowing the whistle here and there is an offside. Remember we talked at the top of the programme last Saturday. This is the second of three home games for FC Tulsa and the fans certainly expectant that FC Tulsa will win all three games if they're really going to put pressure on the likes of the Miami FC who are currently in sixth and Detroit City FC who are in seventh. There is currently an eight point gap. So obviously if FC Tulsa were to get the win tonight, it goes down to five points and it suddenly starts to get really interesting. FC Tulsa do have to go to Detroit City FC as well. That one on September the 24th. And Dave, you mentioned the importance of these home games. When FC Tulsa plays at home, they have seven wins so far this season, and especially they have much more success when scoring first. So it's something to be mindful of as this game continues to develop. Yeah, FC Tulsa have beaten Birmingham Legion by three goals to one at One Oak Field. They had a very impressive 1-0 uh, win. Seems like an age ago when Dario Suarez scored the only goal of the game against San Diego Loyal. And then wins against New York Red Bulls 2, Detroit City by three goals to one, Charleston Battery, Atlanta United 2, and last Saturday, who could forget Machuca's injury time goal to beat Indy 11 by one goal to nil. Nil-nil the score here, coming up to the 13th minute mark. There's a little dummy from De Costa, not read by Labo Maloto there. An easy for Yannick Ertl to just play the ball here to Tom Bruitt. Barrera. Just getting a little bit of space here and then a beautiful ball finds Andre Lewis. Lewis was immediately tackled by Ronald Rodriguez and now Cabato comes away with the ball. He loses the challenge of Ariel Martinez. Brings in Noah Powder. Powder wearing 66, purple boots up to Kembo Kibato, now a ball to the far post. 
Coming in is Rodrigo da Costa. Did the right thing, headed it back across goal, but Anna Beffa, just nobody there to put the finishing touch to that move. Da Costa did everything right. You're exactly right. Those runners not in the box to finish. But what I loved about the development of that play was it started from a great defensive play from Kimbo Kibato, clean tackle, dribbles down the field, and Dave FC Tulsa, when they're working that way, when they're making those runs, quick decisions, good things happen. Obviously, they need more runners in the box to make that play come to fruition. Let's just have another look at this and did Da Costa do the right thing? There's Maloto's board to Da Costa. Does he head it back across goal? Just needed someone coming in to finish that one off. Yeah, tough to see. That angle was hard to probably play back to the back post to put that one on frame. Dario Suarez was in there, but just not able to execute. As we said, the first visit of Hartford Athletic and their uh, some, uh, there were some good hugs going on before the game. Uh, Moja Dharma got uh, lots of hugs. Of course, very popular here, Moja Dharma with FC Tulsa, and now, of course, with Hartford Athletic. He's on the bench tonight, so it was nice to see, wasn't it? It was. A lot of mutual respect between both teams, and obviously the players that have played for their respective sides. We'll get another look here at the replay of that last chance for FC Tulsa. Ultimately, nothing dangerous to come of that ball played back across. Now here's Suarez, went for it uh, first time, and it goes harmlessly away for a goal kick. But certainly Suarez, Da Costa and Labour Maloto are giving the back four of Hartford Athletic something to think about. Bruitt out wide to the left-hand side to Gadula. Gadula infield to Danny Pereira. Gadula again playing at left back, right foots the ball up to the head of Ariel Martinez. Here's Bradley Bouchoir. Goes back to Austin Wormel, wearing all blue tonight. Austin Wormel in his 14th appearance of the season. He's conceded only 13 goals. And has an 81% save percentage, as Anna Beffa told us in the, the top of the programme. It's just been a lad that's really taken his opportunity uh, when you know he took over from Sean Lewis Sean Lewis now playing his trade at Indy 11 he was on the bench on Saturday but he's just taken it so well Austin Wormel for a young man isn't he he absolutely has and he, he had the opportunity last year to step in for some games for FC Tulsa showed very very well there continued that over this season just remained patient continued to work hard in training and ultimately that has paid off and translated into these games and it's great to see the league is recognizing that as well Hartford Athletic enjoying some good possession. Here's Budadi. Gets the 1 2 with Ariel Martinez. Martinez again now wearing six. Chips the ball to that left hand side. Disappointingly for the likes of Prince Sadie, who wanted that played defeat. And it's going to go away. And Dave Hartford Athletic, you mentioned they've had some good spells of possession so far in this game. And that hasn't been one of their main problems this season. They outpossessed Miami in their last game about 60-40. They had sh six shots on target to Miami's four, but they just could not be clinical in front of goal. They conceded a late goal in the first half, so it hasn't been a lack of possession. It's just what they do with that possession and being pivotal in front of goal. De Costa gets the header in. Here's Sia McFarlane chipping it to the far post. Labo Malota will not be able to keep that one in. And it goes away for yet another goal kick. And it just seems to be that final pass. Indeed, there was an offside, actually, on the 18-yard line. Just that last pass, I think, Anna, that uh, interim head coach Donovan Ricketts will want to be a little bit sharper with. I think you're exactly right. The build-up is there. The ideas are there. FC Tulsa making the appropriate runs. But it's just that final piece, that final shot that's lacking at the moment. It's the voice of Anna Beffer. Big 12 champion alongside yours truly, Dave Saunders. Here's Luca Perper inside the box, chips it in there. It hits the back of uh, Defender. Still they keep it alive. Do Ray Reed's man. Here's Budadi to the far post. Real chance, and he's put it into the side netting. And Prince Sadie will want that one back by his own standards because that was a real opportunity. He was unmarked at the far post, and that man in frame... We'll want that one back, Anna. Definitely. That was one of the best chances so far in the first half for either team. And a great back post run from Prince Sadie. Excellent distribution. Just patient as that ball floated over. The one-time 
shot, but just not able to put that one on frame. And Dave, when you're that close, you have that much time. I think he might have been a bit shocked that he had that much space. But if you're FC Tulsa, have to be touch tight there. Prince Lady has scored three times this season, also with four assists. But just have a look at the amount of space that he's got here. Yeah, great distribution in from Budadi. Finds himself open on the back post, tries the instep. You see Austin Rommel demanding better from his defense there. It is one of the great ball over the top here. A fine run here for Joel Johnson. Now he's in space. Ronald Rodriguez comes across there. He pulls it back. Martinez with a shot. Martinez with the goal. And the former FC Tulsa man has opened the scoring. With 19 and a half minutes gone, he doesn't want to celebrate, but his teammates do because he's put Hartford Athletic in the lead. It's FC Tulsa nil, Hartford Athletic one. Great play from Hartford Athletic. Started with Joel Johnson there on that right side, and then we've talked about Ariel Martinez and his abilities early on in this match. We've seen him on the dribble. We've seen his ability to shoot, but what an excellent finish. The one-time shot, upper 90 from Ariel Martinez. We'll get another look here at the replay. And Dave, Hartford Athletic has definitely looked threatening throughout this first half. They've had their moments. And for Ariel Martinez, he's not going to miss from there. The veteran, so experienced in those moments, able to put that one away for Hartford Athletic and give them a leg up here in this match and a much, much needed goal for them. Ariel Martinez, his third goal of the season. Long way to go. But FC Tulsa, the incline just gets a little bit steeper there. And Hartford Athletic fans will be delighted that away from home, Hartford Athletic have the lead. Here's Kembo Kibato. Feeds in Adrian Dispay. Ball worked out to Sia McFarlane. 21 minutes gone here at One Oak Field. Visitors have the lead. Dispay's overcooked that one and that will be... Time to slow things down for Yunus Badadi, who would come across the Moroccan and take this throw. And it was certainly a fine finish from, as you say, the veteran Ariel Martinez. It really was. And you can't leave someone like him unmarked in the box with that much time. Steps up. All he needs is a one-touch finish there and executes perfectly. Maloto has just stepped in front of Budadi there. Dave, this is a really important next five minutes for FC Tulsa, especially they went down early at Miami, but were able to respond very, very quickly within a few minutes to get a goal back. It changed the entire landscape of that game. So that's going to be very important here to see how they respond. Eric Bird, Da Costa got caught there, powder, ball ricochets off nicely to Labour Maloto, but Martinez takes over. Cabato's in there, strong challenge from Adrian Dispay. Played the ball. Dispay now finds Labour Maloto. Maloto goes far post, it just eludes the run of Da Costa, and it's been that kind of night, Anna, in the first 22 minutes, the final ball just not getting to the man for FC Tulsa. No, it's not, and you can see a bit of frustration in FC Tulsa after these plays because they do so much quality work to get to that point, and then you mentioned, Dave, that final ball is lacking, but the reaction from Da Costa, thumbs up. Here's Suarez onto his left foot again, a few yards over the bar, no save for Yannick Ertl to make, and it remains 1-0 to Hartford Athletic. The last time they were away from home, they were going down by three goals to one at Memphis. They did get a 0-0 draw at Rio Grande Valley at the end of July, it's been one win away from home for Hartford Athletic. Long way to go, but they would dearly love to go away from Tulsa with the three points tonight. There's 11 points between the two teams tonight. Hartford Athletic currently uh, on 20 points. Here's Sia McFarlane. Kembo Kibato, now Eric Bird finds Maloto. Neat football from FC Tulsa, but alas, on the break here is Joel Johnson, who really set up the Martinez goal.
Perper finds Barrera. Those two have done really well in the central midfield. Martinez involved there. Barrera again. Martinez just knocking the ball around with all his experience. Andre Lewis back to Bruitt. Again, Barrera and Perper involved there. Good ball in field to Andre Lewis. Really good football from the away side here. Budardi's ball goes straight to Ronald Rodriguez. Now Powder. Rodriguez in a bit of a tight corner there. But he has won a throw in for his side. You've got to be impressed with this Hartford Athletic side. I know they've really come in here and tried to dictate the game. They're, they're not up on the, on the possession percentage, but what they've done with the ball, they've really used it wisely. Right, and that's at the end of the day what matters in Hartford Athletic, taking advantage of their opportunities. Obviously, the Ariel Martinez goal, but when they're getting in those moments, they're causing FC Tulsa defense to really take a moment, reorganize, because they're applying a lot of pressure. Here's Da Costa. Rodrigo Da Costa finds Kembo Kibato. Noah Powder's wide on the left. Kibato goes to Bird here. Bird to Suarez. Suarez hits a shot which hits the foot of Yakubu. Here's the other number four, Ron Rodriguez, the El Salvador International, finds Kembo Kibato. Bird just two. Suarez here, Suarez onto his right foot. Oh, good save from the goalkeeper. Suarez was on his left foot, he brought it back onto his right, and that's a good save from Yannick Ertl, the German goalkeeper there, down to his left. It was better from FC Tulsa, patience in the box, the build-up, the one-two, every piece of the puzzle was there, but Suarez just not enough on that shot, and Ath Athletic are back the other way. Prince Sadie now cropping up on the right-hand side onto his left foot, just over the bar, no touch from Austin Wormel. But you just feel down the Hartford Athletic right, Anna, obvious thing to say, the Prince Sadie and also the likes of Joel Johnson have really had the freedom of one oak field tonight. They have. There's a ton of space on that side, which has really limited Noah Powder's ability to get forward. We've talked about that before, Dave. When you have those players on the wings and applying that pressure, a player that likes to get forward will automatically start to think in the back of their head they need to stay home more. As we'll get in a quick look here at that last play, Dario Suarez shot on goal. Great buildup from FC Tulsa. Kimbo Cabato, he's been so great so far in this game in the midfield to create those chances, but again, have to be clinical in front of goal. Dispay got some kind of a challenge in, but uh, Joel Johnson, it's significant to me that Joel Johnson and Prince Sadie are swapping the wings pretty frequently, which obviously makes your back three really think about things. And there's Ariel Martinez at the top, wearing the number six shirt, playing in the number nine position. Here's Labo Maloto. He's seen a lot of the football inside this first 27 minutes. Bird goes back to Rodriguez, now Kembo Kibata, good turn from him. Looks for a bit of support, gets it in the shape of Noah Powder. Noah Powder in from Indy 11, with Sean Lewis going the other way. Adrian Dispay. Here's to Costa, Suarez. Suarez will try to put in Sia McFarlane, but nothing do there, and that will go away for a goal kick. As the world demands low cost, low carbon energy, Williams will be there with the best transport storage and delivery solutions. Williams, we make clean energy happen. Dave Saunders and Anna Beffa with you here at One Oak Field for this USL Championship match. FC Tulsa nil, Hartford Athletic one, Ariel Martinez with the goal. In a must-win game for both sides, and here's Dispay just cushioning the ball down, and FC Tulsa will reset and go again. Here's Cabato. Eric Berg gets a little shove from Barrera, still has the ball here. Labour Maloto, Noah Powder. Hasn't had a lot of space to play in Noah Powder so far. Powder will go back to Ronald Rodriguez. Breaking ball from him to Sia McFarlane. Now Adrian Dispay will come forward from the back three. 
looks for the run, gets it in the shape of Dario Suarez. Good ball from him. Sia McFarlane inside the box. Sia McFarlane again with a little touch there from Rodrigo to Costa. FC Tulsa and Abefa just getting slightly closer. Right, they're getting better and better in those moments inside the box. They're not settling for the chip or the hopeful ball. They're finding feet, combining, which is what they do best. They have so many good technical players, and FC Tulsa doing a great job here. Long throw into the box. Yakubi heads it away. Sadie got a touch. Here's Eric Bird, who fires one way wide of the target uh, once again, and it remains 1-0 to Hartford Athletic and a goal kick for Yannick Ertl. Two balls on the field. No need for a hydration break with the temperatures below 90 degrees. It's actually quite a pleasant evening here. Cloudless sky, but certainly the temperatures have dropped a little bit from what they have been in recent uh, days here. Certainly we've been used to 100 degree temperatures and certainly in the late 90s as Austin Wormel clean, clears uh, left-footed. Budadi, touch from Purpa, ball loose here, away by Bradley Bouchoir, just gives it away to Bruitt, Bruitt finds Barrera, Purpa, how many times have those two connected tonight? Great ball out wide on the left-hand side, Joel Johnson. Joel Johnson brings in Gadula. Johnson again, not afraid to go back here to Tom Bruitt. McFarlane's won it back for Donovan Ricketts' men here. Here's Kibato. Labo Maloto. Inside the centre circle here. Fashions out the space to play it out to Sian McFarlane. McFarlane back to the South African. Now here's Dario Suarez. He goes out to Noah Powder. Patient build up. Powder, one step over, shoots, slices his shot, will go away for a throw in. Noah Powder of course did get uh, a shot with his right foot into uh, the the goal in uh, Miami for the 2-1 win. Foul by Da Costa. We're in the 32nd minute here in downtown Tulsa. FC Tulsa nil, half athletic one. Ikubu Referee said there was a foul. And a free kick for the likes of Andre Lewis there in shot. To Dario Suarez just trying to buy a little bit of time for his team. But FC Tulsa have got to find their way back into this game, Anna. They definitely do. They haven't had much success when they're down at half. Haven't been able to find the three points after not scoring at half. So it's very important for them to respond here. Here's Barrera. Back to Tom Bruitt. Bruitt will find Tulu here. Purpa. Prince Sadie did well there to elude the challenge of Maloto. And there's an offside, and FC Tulsa will want to get back on with this. Not quite uh, running out of time too much yet, but we are in the 33rd minute, and they are trading by a goal to nil. Again, a respect shown between the two sides that Ariel Martinez didn't want to celebrate in front of the FC Tulsa fans. Of course, was greatly loved here as well. Here's Da Costa, Maloto. Maloto, good tackle from... Budadi looked like a handball there, and the referee is saying that it's gone against the Englishman Bruitt. One of those that could have gone either way. The referee's in consultation with his assistant here. But the referee is going to go with a free kick to 
FC Tulsa and it's a good position for the likes of Darius Warriors. Let's just have a look at the replay here. Started off by DaCosta and Maloto trying to keep this play alive. Ball pops up, Dave, it really could have gone either way there. Referee in the position he was in calling that handball on Bruitt. And a dangerous, dangerous opportunity here with Labo Maloto and Dario Suarez standing over this one for FC Tulsa. As you say, one of those two. Suarez might well fancy this. The wall set up, four men in the wall. Five men in the wall now. And it is Maloto that's walked away, so it's gonna be Dario Suarez. Could play a little ball here to Maloto, who's in plenty of space just to the left of your shot. Up comes Suarez here towards goal, hits the wall, and that one will go away for a throw in to FC Tulsa. And always disappointing, Anna, isn't it, when you know the free kick is not wasted, but you know hit into the wall. Right, especially an opportunity like that. Want to give yourself an opportunity, put that ball on frame. There are actually a couple of options I saw outside of the wall, but. Nonetheless, Hartford Athletic does their job there, but FC Tulsa still applying pressure. Fallen into the box, here's to Costa with a header just wide from the six yard line. Good ball in from Sia McFarlane. You see DaCosta there with the thumbs up after that play. That's what's important when you have a leader like him, keeping spirits high, that's key for FC Tulsa. You're down a goal, but you do not want to get frustrated, and you see Donovan Ricketts right there. That's one of his strengths too, Dave. Stays very calm, very confident in his side. You won't see him getting stressed when they're down. That's one of the strengths that the team plays off of. It's Labo Maloto. Good ball to Dario Suarez. Bird here. McFarlane's on the overlap. Here he is. McFarlane, good ball into the box, but straight to the keeper. Yannick Ertl, who dives on the ball and bowls the ball out here. Here's another look at that last effort from DaCosta, the header up over the bar. But again, McFarlane on that right side had some great distribution, just haven't been able to put the play together yet. Perper just nearly playing in Andre Lewis, and it's, say again, it's a very fluid uh, front three that are in behind uh, uh, Ariel Martinez. Referee blowing the whistle and telling Noah Powder he's got to retreat a little bit there, the man in shot. Adrian Dispay having to work a little bit hard to keep that one in from the corner, plays it up, looking for Dario Suarez who gets a foot in immediately from Bird here to Maloto. Powder striding up the left-hand side. Maloto's taken a heavy touch there. Good tackle coming in from Tulu. Wins that one. Tulu again goes back here to Badadi. Now Luca Perpa. Danny Barrera. Ariel Martinez. Those two extremely experienced. Martinez, good ball out to the left-hand side. Prince Sadie looking to get the ball again to Ariel Martinez. But Bradley Bourgeois able to put it behind for a corner. It was excellent defensive play from Bourgeois. Track that runner, transition back quickly to intercept that play because what makes Ariel Martinez so good, Dave, and you mentioned just the type of player that he is, he plays that ball off and immediately sprints into the box, makes that run, knows the play is not dead and continues to create an opportunity. But credit FC Tulsa defense. They transitioned back quickly. Bradley Bourgeois so athletic, able to recover there. But FC Tulsa in a position where they need to defend a corner kick here. Yeah, Pereira it is with his left foot from the left-hand side. Holds his right arm aloft to the near post and away for another corner. And you've got to be impressed with this approach from Half Athletic who took the lead with Martinez in the 20th minute. And we're on the attack again from that left-hand side. Everybody back for FC Tulsa inside the 18-yard box. Barrera near post again, flicked away. FC Tulsa defender was on the floor. His Bidardi could try one with his left foot. Does. Good save from Wormel because that went through the legs of Prince Sadie. And now there's a throw out here to 
See McFarlane. McFarlane here to Dario Suarez. Immediately off here for Rodrigo da Costa. Better from FC Tulsa. Here's Suarez now. Suarez to the Brazilian da Costa. A little bit of magic needed from da Costa. Outside of the boot here. Suarez inside the box trying to twist and turn. And in the end, Bruitt can get the ball away. And it's given away to Ronald Rodriguez. FC Tulsa now knocking on the door in the 39th minute here. Training by a goal to nil. Here's Kib Barto. Has to go round the referee there. Out to Adrian Dispay, who immediately finds Kembo Kibato here. Labour Meloto is out wide on the right-hand side. Patient build-up from FC Tulsa. Here's Da Costa, goes through his legs. He gets a little bit lucky, gets it to Powder. Noah Powder now, one step over. Da Costa wide on the left. De Costa back to Noah Powder. Real patience here from FC Tulsa, the home side here. Bradley Bushwa back on halfway. The pass is mounting up here. Good ball from Disbay here. Ball into the box. Bruitt chests it down easily for Luca Perper. Given away by Di to Disbay. Suarez has got his back to goal, surrounded by defenders. Eric Bird. Dispay is wide. Leaves it for Sia McFarlane. And that one is played out. Good spell from FC Tulsa, but again, no end product there on a Beffer. It was, but credit Hartford Athletic there. They stayed compact. They stayed disciplined, defensively tracked runners, and they stood players up. They didn't dive in. They didn't commit a foul. Just made FC Tulsa overplay there play that ball out for a throw-in and able to get things going back the other way. The final $1 beer night will be held this coming Saturday on August the 27th. Purchase your ticket in the midfield terrace section at One Oak Field and enjoy $1 brews throughout the night. Please drink responsibly. 1-0 the score. Ball into the box. Headed away by Bruitt again. Birds battling away for the cause. Ball brought down beautifully by Joel Johnson. Andre Lewis, Tulu now, one of the centre-backs, back to Ertl, who right-foots the ball straight to the head of Ronald Rodriguez. Powder gets in, no foul, says the referee. Badadi went down. And FC Tulsa play on. Budadi stayed down on halfway. Eric Bird wearing 44 down the centre of the field. Threads it through looking for Dario Suarez. And again, the ball cut out there. And some attention needed for Budadi here, the right back, who's still down on the halfway line. There he is, just getting up. He felt he was caught with his right foot there. Eunice Budadi. Budadi's uh, interesting character. He actually joined... Club Bruges in Belgium, aged seven. Now playing his trade here with Hartford Athletic. Let's just see what happened here. There's Noah Powder playing ball and man at the same time, I think, to be fair to that one. Well, Anna, FC Tulsa, we've said it before, we'll say it again, are getting closer. They're enjoying possession, but there's just not that end product at the moment, is there? No, and they've continued to sharpen things up in the final third. DaCosta's had a couple of good opportunities. Dario Suarez, the, the interplay between Meloto and the players around him. Cabato's had a great first half for me in the midfield. But that final ball, that final pass is lacking. And key for FC Tulsa, we talked about it with the reaction from DaCosta, the thumbs up after an unsuccessful go. You cannot get frustrated. The chances will continue to come. And I think that's important for them to keep their head and just know that they will have another opportunity in front of goal, but they just have to take it. FC Tulsa with 67% of the possession of the football inside this first 43 minutes. His goal scorer, Martinez. Barrera lays it off. Budadi is okay here, up to halfway. Goes back to Tulu. Luca Perper has been industrious in that midfield with Barrera. Up against Eric Bird and Kembo Kibato. It's an interesting two-on-two -two battle in the middle of the field. Here's Adrian Dispay coming forward. Good run from the Cuban here. 
McFarlane goes back to Dispay. Dispay again, header forward by McFarlane, nearly found De Costa. But Perper plays the ball down that left hand side. Dispay's done well to recover there and goes back to Austin Wormel, who's been beaten by a wonderful shot from Ariel Martinez in this first half, which separates the two sides. Dave Saunders and Anna Beffer here with you on ESPN Plus and also here locally in Tulsa on My 41. Here's Noah Powder trying to get a goal before half time. Powder onto his right foot here. Labo Meloto lets it run. It's been driven wide a little bit here. And a challenge from Danny Barrera there deemed unfair by the referee. And it will be a chance for FC Tulsa to get a ball in. And we might see the likes of Bradley Bouchoir and maybe Ronald Rodriguez coming up and uh, Adrian Dispay from the back here, Anna. There's Eric Bird, who reached 10,000 career USL Championship minutes at the weekend. Congratulations to him. Clapping his hands there. Come on. He wants more from his team. Real chance here, Anna, with the big man up from the back. It is. FC Tulsa will treat this almost like a corner kick. You have most of FC Tulsa in the box. Kimbo Kibato and Noah Powder at the top for the knockdown. But Leba Moloto with the in-swinger with the right foot here targeting Da Costa or Suarez. Good time to score into the box. It's flicked on by a defender. And the referee saying there was a foul on the goalkeeper. And Da Costa immediately apologizing to the goalkeeper who... I think got a little bang in the face there. We're going to have one minute of Tulsa Tech stoppage time. Enroll today at tulsatech.edu. There is the German on loan from New England Revolution from uh, May of this year. There's Bradley Bouchoir, who always gives his best effort for FC Tulsa can play at uh, anywhere across the back three. He's playing in the middle of that back three. He can also play at right wing back. Did get a goal this season in the Open Cup down at uh, Dallas in the 2-1 defeat. Juan Rodriguez gets a good header in. Ball flicked on. FC Tulsa seem to have sorted things out a little bit tactically and a Ronald Rodriguez as the referee brings the proceedings to an end but they will have to discuss that I think in the locker room as we go in with FC Tulsa a goal to nil down. Right you mentioned the adjustment Hartford Athletic had a lot of space on that wing Joel Johnson making the most of it with the great assist to Ariel Martinez obviously Hartford Athletic found the back of the net first interesting to see how Interim head coach Donovan Ricketts will respond here from an FC Tulsa perspective. They haven't lacked in opportunities or chances, but as we've talked about all night, they just need to find a way to put the ball in the back of the net. Donovan Ricketts, very calm, very cool in these moments, full confidence in his team. I'd imagine he will translate that into the locker room. 45 minutes left to be played and a game still there to be taken. Yeah, much to be said by the two coaches. Of course, half athletic, a goal up. They will be desperate to take away the three points. FC Tolsa need three points. Are they going to come back in the second half? Before the second half, we've got the Williams halftime show for you coming right up after this break. Crib's been smoking the good stuff over 20 years, serving up mouth water and barbecue, talking about slow smoked classics like Rib Crib's famous ribs. Yeah. Hungry at Rib Crib. At Williams, we're focused on adding new technology and operating practices that deliver right here, right now reductions in global emissions, cutting edge emissions measuring and monitoring, certifiable and transparent emissions data, real-time energy optimization across the natural gas value chain, integration and delivery of the fuels of the future, meeting global energy demand and global climate goals. For us, this is just the beginning. Williams, we make clean energy happen. Trust the local experts in career training. For more than 50 years, Tulsa Tech has been in your neighborhood. From high schools to our six campuses, we're ready to train you for the career of your dreams. Get the industry credentials to get paid with our hands-on training in everything from aerospace and automotive to health science and IT. Make this next year the best ever and see how Tulsa Tech can help make your own path by calling 918-828-5000 or logging on to tulsatech.edu today. Whoa, nice 
Nice ride, brother. Thanks, man. Go check out Ferguson Kia. Get one for yourself. So, Ferguson Kia, huh? Yes, sir. With their new lineup, they have something for every lifestyle. Thanks, Sean. Remember, we've got what you're looking for. Harry Martinez, the former FC Tulsa man, separates the two sides with his goal in the 20th minute. Much to look at, much to talk about in the Williams Halftime Show, coming right up after the break. We all have goals. But let's be honest. Most of us aren't going to be professional athletes. But if your goal is to finish your degree, we can help. Come to a university that puts your goals first. Bellevue University, your partner in finishing goals. Summertime is back at Osage Casino Hotel Tulsa, and we have the perfect getaway for you. Cool off in our spacious freeform pool, grab your favorite drink and chill at the poolside bar, or relax and unwind in a cozy private cabana. Just steps away are tempting restaurants, live entertainment, and a world-class casino gaming experience. At Osage Casino Hotel Tulsa, your place to stay and relax. Elation if you're a Hartford Athletic fan and FC Tulsa fans hoping for more from their team in this must-win game for both teams. As you can see, it is 1-0 to Hartford Athletic in their first ever visit here to One Oak Field. Let's have a look at uh, some information from around the country. Not too much uh, going on uh, tonight. There is a game, uh, San Diego Loyal against Oakland Roots. And of course on Saturday, two games that FC Tulsa will be looking at, Indy 11 versus San Antonio. Of course, Indy 11, the last opponents here before tonight's uh, uh, Hartford Athletic. And uh, the Miami FC, a tough one against Lou City, who are out there in front and of course Lou City will be coming here on September the 7th which is the same day as the USL excuse me the US Open Cup final that's going to be in Orlando and of course it's Orlando City SC versus the USL Championships Sacramento Republic good luck to them the USL Championship and League One combined for six wins over MLS opponents in the Open Cup good luck to them as we have a look Anna Beffer at the standings and we know that the 
top team, which currently is Lou City, will go through to the semi final. But then two, three, four, five, six, and seven go into the playoffs. FC Tulsa, currently in eighth, just need to turn this around to close that eight point gap. Right. FC Tulsa in a position where if they get those three points tonight and continue to find a way to win, they put themselves in an opportunity to get in that seven spot but they're going to need some help from other teams around the Eastern Conference, but all they can do is control what they can control. Obviously, Indy 11 right behind them, Loudoun United FC, Hartford Athletic just outside, but continuing, Dave, mathematically, they are not out of the playoff hunt just yet. So a lot of soccer left to be played, but each game, each point, so crucial this late in the season. Every moment counts. You could almost go as far as to say is these big saves count, these big goals and moments count this late in the season excited to watch the second half for these two teams as they continue their hunt for the playoffs yeah a lot at stake uh, a man that's been in form we've been waiting for this one to show you all night let's have a look at the team of the week graphic and there he is at the top big smile as well from the player of the week not only team of the week but the player of the week week 24 and that is fc tulsa's austin wormel he's been in very very fine form he's played so well all season the tulsa native recorded a seven save shutout, including we s watched it in the pregame show, a brilliant second half stop to keep the game scoreless in a pivotal moment around the 65th minute. FC Tulsa went on to win that game 1-0 thanks to a goal from Machuca. But Austin Wormel defensively has been so critical for FC Tulsa since he has taken that starting spot about midseason, Dave. And FC Tulsa has looked very good defensively since he's taken that spot. For FC Tulsa. Yeah, congratulations to the local lad Austin Wormel and indeed to all of those players who were selected for the team of the week in week 24. Now we've talked about the importance of tonight's game. Let's have a look at the upcoming schedule, Anna, for FC Tulsa. FC Tulsa again, obviously the home game tonight will have another opportunity at home versus Loudoun United on Saturday. Then they'll travel to Atlanta United to a tough matchup again back here at One Oak Field against Louisville City FC. Obviously, Hartford Athletic and Detroit City FC await them as well. But Dave, we've talked about the importance of the remaining games, the points, etc. But so important for FC Tulsa focus on the games at hand, get the three points, control what they can control. They'll need some help from others around the Eastern Conference, but all they can do is win out and put themselves in a position for playoffs. I'll tell you what, let's take one more break and then we'll come back with your first half highlights and your first half stats. Lead, they just do. Leading is building tomorrow's infrastructure today. Leading is fueling innovations the world has yet to imagine. Leading is how Williams makes clean energy happen. Tulsa Bone & Joint is Northeast Oklahoma's one-stop shop for orthopedic care and now features outpatient joint replacement surgeries at Union Pine Surgery Center. Dr. Jason Griffin of Tulsa Bone & Joint is proud to serve as the team physician for FC Tulsa. Since 2018, Dr. Griffin has provided his medical expertise both on the field and in the clinic to FC Tulsa players. Tulsa Bone & Joint is proud to be the official orthopedic care provider for FC Tulsa. Tulsa Bone & Joint, moving life forward. something for every lifestyle. Thanks, John. Remember, we've got what you're looking for. This is a city that is being run like a startup. I think it's a remote mecca that's in the ground stages. Everything that I do for fun in DC, I was also able to do here, but it was way more accessible. I got here and was fully impressed. The city is genuinely welcoming of new people and new ideas. We have to start realizing there's other places to live besides just the East Coast and West Coast. Tulsa Remote is looking for great people to join our community. Tell your friends out of state to check out Tulsa. 
by Reef Krebs smoking the good stuff since 92. By Panera, try one of the new chef's chicken sandwiches at Panera today. The signature take or the spicy take. Panera, the familiar made fantastic. And by Bank of Oklahoma, we go above so you can go beyond. Let's get into the first half highlights here with uh, Anna Beffa. Plenty of possession for the home side, but alas, they trail by a goal to nil. Yeah, FC Tulsa dominant in possession in the first half, but it's what you do with the ball that counts. And FC Tulsa getting in those good areas, but it's that final ball, that final shot that had been lacking for FC Tulsa. But Hartford Athletic making the most of their opportunity. Great run by Joel Johnson on that right side. And the veteran, Ariel Martinez, outstanding finish. If you're FC Tulsa, cannot leave someone of his caliber open in the midfield. One-time finish past Austin Wormel. Ariel Martinez, former FC Tulsa man. They know what he's capable of, and he executes there. But FC Tulsa continued to get in those spaces. They started to find a rhythm. Dario Suarez had an excellent opportunity here. Have to go low and away. Put some more power behind that shot. But the combination play, the ideas, and the movement from FC Tulsa continued, Dave, to get better and better in the first half. But again, Donovan Ricketts' team not able to find the back of the net in the first half. Noah Powder, Sion McFarlane on those wings. We're playing balls in like this all night in this first half. DaCosta there on the header, not able to convert, but the opportunities, Dave, will continue to come. First half stats here. Let's have a quick look at the manner. We can see, as we said, just about 55 to 45 possession. You've got to be uh, looking at the shots there. 10 for FC Tulsa, 7 for uh, Hartford Athletic, but as you say, it's got to improve in the goal tally for FC Tulsa. Right, FC Tulsa see the shots on target there. Hartford Athletic leading that statistic there with three to one. That's the difference maker. Hartford Athletic able to find the back of the net in the first half. It'll be interesting to see as both teams set for that second half kickoff now and FC Tulsa with a hill to climb at the moment. What I can tell you is that uh, there's been an immediate reaction to that first half. Labor Maloto has been withdrawn. Marcus Epps wearing the number seven shirt, the latest signing for FC Tulsa. He comes onto the field. He just had uh, literally 15 minutes in the game on Saturday. An exciting player, can play anywhere uh, along the front three. Lot of responsibility on that young man, but from what we're hearing in the FC Tulsa camp, very well respected by his teammates and, of course, by the coaching staff. Harford Athletic in their patina green shirts, white socks and white shorts will get us underway, playing from right to left. FC Tulsa then down at the break. We'll need to turn this around if they're going to keep the pressure on seventh place. Of course, if you are a Detroit fan or a Miami fan looking in at this one, you're absolutely delighted at the moment that Hartford Athletic are winning this one. Here's Dario Suarez, just gets tackled there. Pereira comes away with the ball. Andre Lewis goes back to keeper Ertl. Underneath this one, Adrian Dispay. Smoke going across the field here. Here's Eric Berg, got a little push there. Referee says it will be a free kick. Down goes Andre Lewis. The referee's just going to calm things down as Andre Lewis goes down. Adrian Dispay trying to encourage him to get back up. Lewis wants a little bit of uh, attention here. And Adrian Dispay has got to be a little bit careful. He's trying to pick, pick Lewis up here. We'll see here, Anna. I think the referee had always already blown the whistle for the push in the back of Eric Bird. Andre Lewis is okay. Dispay will get us underway. There's Ray Reed, the 61-year-old. Of course, a legend at UConn. I was privileged enough to interview Ray Reed back in 2017. Real football man. Loves his job, technical director. And of course, we should say congratulations, of course, to Tab Ramos, who has spent eight years as the head coach of the U.S. under-20 national team from 2011 to 2019. And he will be in charge from September the 10th for half an athletic against FC Tulsa in the return game. Ariel Martinez, the goal scorer. Andre Lewis, shot from him over the top. Did have Prince 
Sadie out wide on the left and Sadie's a little bit disappointed and told him that I think Austin Wormel goal kick Adrian Dispay really important if you're an FC Tulsa fan Anna as you try to get back on level terms that you don't concede the second one as Dispay goes too long there Right, obviously FC Tulsa needing to react quickly here in the early moments of this second half to put themselves back in a position to get the three points here. But you're exactly right, FC Tulsa, a thin margin of error defensively. They cannot give up another goal and allow Hartford Athletic to continue to build that confidence from an offensive front. Another little change in formation. Ron Rodriguez and Adrian Dispay and Bradley Bouchoir have just had a little shuffle at the back, the back three there. Bradley Bouchoir is playing wide on the right now, having been central. That was Epps, first touch there, going back to Austin Wormel, Adrian Dispay. Going up to Sian McFarlane there. McFarlane gets brought down. Referee has kept his cards in his pocket and he's just saying there to Gadula, I want to do that tonight. I don't want to produce any cards. Sian McFarland is playing further up the field now. So it's pretty attacking from FC Tulsa as they try to bring in Marcus Epps here. Epps with the throw in. 27 year old acquired from Phoenix with JJ Williams who was the top goal scorer going the other way now the referee's seen a foul here so a free kick on the left hand side chance for the likes of Adrian Dispay Bradley Bouchoir and Ronald Rodriguez going up front here so real chance to get this ball into the box and get an early reply here early in this second half free kick then is going to be taken by Sian McFarlane Here is Sian McFarlane then wide on the left. Chipped into the far post. Easy header away. It's going to come here to Kibatu. Had two bites at the cherry there. Ball spinning nastily inside the box. Dispay gets a foot in. Now the ball out to Bradley Bouchoir. Was that a hand there? Referee says no, absolutely not. Straight away. Ball played down the left hand side. And now a real break on Martinez is down the middle. Andre Lewis now striding into the area here, brings it back onto his right foot. Who's he going to pick out? He's going to pick out here Joel Johnson. Johnson now out to Badadi. Badadi could put a decent ball in. He does. Header away from Kibato. And Marcus Epps can tidy up for FC Tulsa. But just for a moment, as Epps has the ball, Anna Beffer, Andre Lewis was in a lot of space. Here's Epps. De Costa. Epps continues his run. De Costa's ball wasn't the best. Bruitt's back there. Goes back to Ertel. Ertel right footing the ball away. Noah Powder's there. It's going to come off Powder. Fans don't miss out on any of the FC Tulsa action this season. Secure your season tickets, mini plans or single match tickets today at fctulsa.com slash tickets. Dave, going back to that play from Hartford Athletic breaking in transition that's what FC Tulsa gives up there as they continue to push for that next goal they'll be a bit exposed defensively and they have to be mindful of that quick in transition defensively because Hartford Athletic clearly with the ability to catch FC Tulsa on the break Tulu Budadi up to Johnson Dardy cleverly finds Barrera. Johnson again. Goes to ground, then gets up. Good challenging from Eric Bird. I think Ray Reed wanted a free kick there. There's Bird, who we said has gone past 10,000 minutes in the USL Championship from Virginia Beach. Attended the University of Virginia from 2011 to 14. This is his 19th start in the central midfield. Played for RGV from 2016 to 19. Half are trying to build, but they've given it away there. In the end, it's just belted out, and it'll be 
a throw in for Noah Powder. Eric Bird, Adrian Dispay has got a little bit of work to do here. Clever from the Cuban there, brings out the ball to Bradley Bouchoir. Bird tries to thread it through. You could see the idea there from Eric Bird trying to put Sian McFarlane in. Here's Kembo Kibato winning it back for Donovan Ricketts' men here. Now here's to Costa in a little bit of space. Epps has got into the box. Marcus Epps here, chance. Shoots just wide of the target. Good ball from De Costa, and that is what Marcus Epps can give you. He finishes up on the ground. He plays it wide of the left hand upright. But as we said, he can play anywhere across that front three. Right, the vision from De Costa there and the intelligence from Epps just to be on that back shoulder, make sure he's onside and slip in behind and try to get past his Hartford Athletic defense. His first touch back inside, he has a little bit of pressure from the defense, just enough to knock him off of that ball and not get a clean look on frame. But Dave, that shows you just a little bit of what he's capable of and the creativity of runs in the final third. Hurtel has to clear there. Underneath this is Ronald Rodriguez. Good first touch. Bird, Bouchoir now, who's playing wider on the right-hand side. He's overcooked that one. Will McFarlane keep it in? Yes, he will. McFarlane, good ball into the box. There's an outrageous overhead attempt by Dario Suarez there as the ball was slightly behind him. Again, you've got to credit the bravery of uh, Donovan Ricketts here when you look at the, the front four, really, you would say now of, of FC Tulsa, Anna, with the, with the substitution at half-time and Bradley Bouchoir pushing on on that right-hand side. Right, and that's a testament to the position that these teams are in. We've talked about it all night long, the standings. Obviously, every point counts. FC Tulsa comfortable to leave themselves exposed in the back here because Donovan Ricketts, nothing but the three points is the expectation for FC Tulsa at home going full throttle here. Obviously, only in the 55th minute, but already pushing to find that equalizer. Ball out wide to the left-hand side. Prince Sadie here just keeps control of the ball. Tries to go around Kibato. Curls it towards the left hand upright. It's going to be a goal kick. Nothing doing for goalkeeper Austin Wormel wearing all blue. That's Prince Sadie who had the last effort. The Liberian, former Phoenix Rising and Miami FC man. Suarez cleverly finds De Costa. De Costa now has got the return from Suarez. De Costa here. Weak shot. No save for Ertel. Good ball from Suarez to find the Brazilian. Referee's going to play on here, even though it hit him, because uh, Heartland Athletic are in control of the ball. They don't want to concede a second here, FC Tulsa. That's easy for Wormel, but De Costa's shot, to be fair, on his right foot, but just straight at the goalkeeper. Great combination play, and just, again, his awareness to make that run kept his eye on the ball but again not able to execute that shot couldn't find enough power I don't know if he should have continued his run maybe his first touch to cut off that defender force them to make a decision there to foul or let him go either way FC Tulsa not able to execute on that opportunity Powder is surrounded by Barrera and Martinez Dispay misses that one that will go away or Bradley Bourgeois is going to keep it in I tell you, Anna, we've seen a lot of different teams at One Oak, and you have to say that Hart Hartford Athletic are, are one of the better teams that we've seen here in the way they've approached the game, uh, belying their, their sort of slightly lower position. Uh, here's De Costa, gets tackled Bird now. Good ball here to Suarez. Suarez round one, Suarez round two. McFarlane here, can he pull it back? He does to the far post. De Costa's there, good header away from Bruitt there. Desperate defending from the Englishman. Now here's Bird as FC Tulsa continue to knock on the door. Noah Powder could try one with his left. Goes out wide here to Epps. Epps to the far post. There's a little push in the back there. And Sadie here will try to get it away, but it's taken over by McFarlane. McFarlane curls it, and really that's not a cross or, or a shot. And FC Tulsa knocking on the door, but a disappointing end there from Sian McFarlane. It was in credit. Hartford Athletic for the defensive effort there. A goal-saving play from Tom Bruitt, in my opinion. Here's another look at that opportunity from DaCosta. 
weak shot, just not able to get enough on that and challenge Otol in the slightest. And by a player of his standards, needs to do better there, as we'll see a couple of substitutions from both teams. Well, Joel Johnson has been withdrawn. And so has Luca Perper. And Machuca, very, very popular, of course, as we take a look at Rashawn Daly, who's come on on the right-hand side. Mario Martinez still up front. And Mojadama comes in at the back. Machuca, it is, who's come into the fray for FC Tulsa. Machuca, of course, that dramatic late, late winner. And he's done it twice this season. He did it against Birmingham Legion as well. So again, an attacking substitution from Donovan Ricketts, bringing on Machuca now on the right-hand side. Machuca actually is getting more minutes, uh, and normally he sort of comes on uh, with 10 or 15 minutes to go. Now he gets a chance with just 58 minutes of the game gone. I think that plays into you know, the discussions we've had earlier about the sense of urgency from FC Tulsa to get that next goal. Donovan Ricketts not wasting any time on changes. Ball down the right-hand side for Rashawn Daly. And the referee said that there was a foul. And the referee just coming across here. And I think he's got a card out. And I think it's going to be Noah Powder who gets the yellow card. Noah Powder's fourth yellow card of the season. Yellow card for you, Anna. Get another look here at the replay. Hands behind his backs, goes in for the challenge. See the top of the foot gets cleats up. Reckless challenge, in my opinion. Referee makes the right call there. He's kept the yellow cards in the book for the most part of this game. It's been a pretty clean game. I don't think there was anything malicious there, but gets to that play late. Nonetheless, Hartford Athletic with a chance here off of a free kick in a very threatening position. Danny Barrera then it is with the responsibility as we come up to the hour mark here. His side leading by a goal to nil. Three, four players down in the area and the referee decides to say it's just a goal kick and there was innocent clashes of the players. Here's Bradley Bouchois. Could go long here for Machuca. Machuca, Ertl's come a mile out of his goal. Good header from the German there and it is away, else Machuca would have been in. Great anticipation from Otol, the goalkeeper for Hartford Athletic, Bradley Bourgeois, good awareness to quickly release that ball in. Machuca was in behind with some space, but snuffed out by the goalkeeper, and FC Tulsa continuing to press here. Capato now to Bird. Bird wide on that right-hand side. Seeing McFarland, it was, who was withdrawn from Machuca. Here's Bradley Bushwell going the long way round. Good ball in to the box, headed away. The ball bobbles around and it goes all through through to Ertl. And Moja Dharma has gone into that centre-back position. Bradley Bushwell underneath this one with Rashawn Daly. Referee saying that is a throw into Hartford Athletic. And the fans starting to get a little bit frustrated here. 61 minutes gone. FC Tulsa trying to turn this around, of course, to keep pressure. There's the centre referee tonight. Gudula changes the field to the right hand side, and Eunice Budadi can come forward here. That's Dali, come on as a second half substitute, Martinez. Connor McGuinn has come into the central midfield. Dula did well to get that back to Tom Bruitt. And now Bradley Bouchoir will go back. Way by Ronald Rodriguez. 
for the foul by Marcus Epps and it's just getting a little bit frustrating for the players and for the fans. Free kick to Harvard Athletic. This is where FC Tulsa needs to be careful just throughout the remainder of this game. Don't want to give away any silly fouls that are unnecessary or puts Hartford Athletic in a position like this one. Important to keep their heads. Ball into the box. Easy take for Austin Wormel, who will want to get things underway again if he can. And he bowls it out here to Ronald Rodriguez. Rodriguez, who's made 14 appearances in World Cup qualifiers for his El Salvador national team, four in the Gold Cup and also five international friendlies. Did get a red card against the USA in recent times. Of course, great friends with Rivas, Joaquin Rivas, who's now gone out to the Miami FC. Here's Noah Powder. Good ball here. Now, Da Costa. Great ball and it just an outstretched leg there from Eric Bird who found himself in a more attacking position than perhaps he's used to there, Anna. FC Tulsa, just the uh, final execution, Eric Bird getting forward in that play, but Dave, we've seen it throughout the first half and bleeding over here into the second half, just the technical piece for FC Tulsa, that final pass continuing to be lacking. You get a shot of Donovan Ricketts there in your screen as FC Tulsa trying to find that rhythm again. And what I don't want to see them get away from is they've had so much success in this first half getting in those areas with the combination play, the creative runs going forward. And then the second half so far, we haven't seen as many of those moments. It's been more direct from FC Tulsa as they're trying to just get numbers up, knowing that they need that next goal. Brute with the clearance under pressure from Dario Suarez. 65th minute here at One Oak Field is Saturday's hero Machuca. Good ball into the box. Need by De Costa, and it goes harmlessly away. Osage Casino Hotel is your place for fun and entertainment after the match. Enjoy a world-class casino experience with high-stakes tables and over 1,600 electronic games. Just four miles from One Oak Field, Osage Casino Hotel, Tulsa. Hurtle then clears. Ron Rodriguez heads it back towards halfway. Epps clashes there with Badadi. Badadi gets a, another head of his. Eric Bird. Good first touch from Kibato. Gets the ball back in. Good turn from Kibato away from Barrera. Gets fouled. No foul, says the referee. Now Barrera will take it up on the pressure from Bird. And that one is out. And FC Tulsa have a throw with Bradley Boucher right on halfway here. Machuca is wide on that right-hand side. Suarez working hard, dropping off the front line. There is Machuca over the top. Now Machuca could be in here. Will the keeper going up? Machuca puts it wide. And there were two of his colleagues to his left. And he chose the wrong option. Dispay with great awareness and distribution there up over the top. The direct ball was successful on that play. Machuca gets in behind, but Dave, you're exactly right. The runner's in the box. Machuca's angle, not the correct decision, did not work. Here's another look at the replay. Great ball over the top. Odles thinks about it, doesn't immediately come out, but Machuca just does not get his feet right, opens his body up. That ball sails wide and up over the bar opportunity there missed for FC Tulsa that had to be buried and as I said in commentary there were two players to his left who would have had somewhat of a tap in if he was able to find them good header by Bruitt unfairly says the referee De Costa down referee wants that one retaken and I think FC Tulsa will be quite thankful for that because Bradley Bourgeois is wide on the right Dispays even pushing on here Eric Bird is going to make way in just uh, a few moments for Peter Chuich. 
So Eric Bird has worked hard tonight. Peter Truich, who missed out on Saturday, comes into the midfield. That'll be a straight swap. And we're also going to see Hartford Athletic make another substitution. And off goes Prince Sadie. And on comes former FC Tulsa favourite Mo Jadama. Here's Bradley Bouchoir. Dispay has to keep control of the ball, does really well, gets it out to that wide left hand side. No power, ball into the box, good header away. And that was from Tulu. So three centre backs now, kind of a back five really as FC Tulsa have a corner and Hartford Athletic will be desperate to keep the score as it is. 69th minute. Here's the corner then from Dario Suarez into the near post, headed away. It's going to come here to Peter Jewett who hits a shot and it hits the back of a player there. I think it was Gadula who got himself in the way. Here's Kembo Kibato. That would have been some first touch from substitute Chewich if that had gone in the top corner. 1-0. Here's Austin Wormel a mile out of his area. Chewich goes wide on the left-hand side. Very attacking lineup. They've really pushed the lineup of of the Athletic. Ball over the top. Machuca's there. Can he get in behind? Ball's going to come here to De Costa. Machuca will still keep this alive for FC Tulsa. Bradley Bouchoir going on the overlap. There he is. Bouchoir, that one's slightly overhit. Bouchoir could get to the byline. Pulls it to the far post and there's nobody there. And in fact, the assistant referee says it has gone out for a goal kick. And it's been that kind of night so far for FC Tulsa. As you can see, the frustration there from Bouchoir. A good late overlapping run for him to get in behind. But that ball from Machuca, just too much on it. He saw the right idea, though. But again, Dave, you said it perfectly. Just that kind of night for FC Tulsa. That final pass is lacking. That final shot is lacking. But still about 20 minutes here in regulation. Hartford Athletic, to their credit, sit back defensively and really held FC Tulsa. Epps to Kibato. Kibato's had a really good game for me in the middle of the midfield there. He's hardly put a foot wrong. Here's Chewich. Suarez. De Costa, Suarez kept, continued his run there, wanted that one back a bit quicker. Ronald Rodriguez to Kibato. Epps dropping a bit deeper. Machuca lets it go for Bouchoir, Bradley Bouchoir. And the ball is wide on the left-hand side. And again, Bradley Bouchoir overcooking that one. And FC Tulsa just struggling to get something on Ertl's frame, nothing doing. Kibato throwing himself to the floor. Now, at the other end, a bit of a chance here. Real chance for two. Great block by Bradley Bouchoir. From the shot from Prince Sadie. Great individual effort from Prince Sadie. The creativity, the little nutmeg on Dispay, but Bourgeois, like a good defender would do, Dispay steps, Bourgeois covers in, does his job, limits Sadie from getting that shot on frame. Again, the piece of creativity there, and Bourgeois does so well to recover. Knocks that one out for a corner kick, but FC Tulsa, with everyone back here, cannot afford to let Hartford Athletic find the back of the net on this one. Barrera, it is third corner for his team in the match. Holds his right arm aloft. He's going to hit this one left-footed into the area, away by the head of Dispay. That one is out. It's going to be a throw in Dispay. Urgently wants the ball from the ball boy there. And the referee's blowing the whistle and saying, you got to just wait for a minute because there's a couple more substitutions going to happen. And we're going to see the introduction of Ash Apollon and also for uh, Prince Sadie who comes off 
We'll tell you about the other substitution in just a moment because Anna Beffer is going to give us the attendance tonight. We mentioned FC Tulsa had about 5,000 on Saturday. They came out in full force again on a weekday to support FC Tulsa with about 4,000. So FC Tulsa fans continuing to be loyal and show up for the home team, trying to will the next goal in for their home side as Hartford Athletic continuing to make a few changes here and try to hold on to this lead. Yeah, 18 minutes left. So Ash Apollon comes on. Also Juan Carlos Obregón to replace Ariel Martinez, who scored the goal way back in the 20th minute, the only goal of the game so far. Adrian Dispay goes long to the right-hand side. Noah Powder in plenty of space, so wide on the left-hand side. Both teams working hard here. Chuich picks out Machuka. Bradley Bouchoir. Machuka will get the ball, just about keeps it in. Bouchoir again. FC Tulsa not really going anywhere at the moment. Dispay, good raking ball here, bringing in Noah Powder. Four players in a black shirt in the box, headed away. It's going to go over Machuka's head as well. And Hartford Athletic will just belt this ball away. Obregon's behind this one, but Dispay gets there ahead of him. Here's Ronald Rodriguez. Peter Chuich goes short. Back to Rodriguez. Given away again, but given away by Hartford Athletic. And Chuich will play the ball into space here to Bradley Bouchoir. Machuka wide on the right. Kembo Kibato. Ahead of him, Marcus Epps. Dario Suarez is there as well. Epps gets a 1-2 with Chuich. Chuich gives it away. Ball through the middle. Obregon can't get on the end of that one. Frustrating night continues for FC Tulsa, but if you're a Hartford Athletic fan, you're buoyed by their performance, and they still lead by a goal to nil with 16 minutes left of the 90. Kembo Kibato, Suarez, Epps wide on that left-hand side. Thundering challenge coming in from De Costa, who's working hard. Rodriguez just cushions the ball down for Kibato now. Kembo Kibato, round one, he goes. This time, it is a foul. The foul committed by Connor McGuinn. Chance again, Anna Beffer for FC Tulsa to get some players into the box. Definitely, Kimbo Kibato does so well there. His quick feet draws the foul for FC Tulsa. And Rodrigo da Costa will stand over this one. Referee just making sure everyone keeps their arms down, plays this one fairly. And FC Tulsa needs to convert on chances like this, especially about 15 minutes left in regulation. We know Dave DaCosta has the capability. Here's DaCosta in behind the back line. There's a header. And it was a really good chance. And it was Adrian Dispay in there. Adrian Dispay, who has not scored in an FC Tulsa shirt. And he won't get too many better opportunities than that. Remembering that he did have a header on Saturday from six yards out as well. Beautiful run, beautiful free kick, but the finish lacking. It was Hartford Athletic defensively surprised they don't have someone touch tight on Adrian Dispay with his height and ability in the air, but he finds himself wide open and not able to put that one on frame and challenge goalkeeper Yannick Odell. Butardi got himself in a bit of a mess there, and I think the referee surprised he didn't uh, stop the game there, but uh, on we go. FC Tulsa in possession with Kibato. Chewich. FC Tulsa keeping control of the ball here. Now Suarez has gone down. Free kick. Here's Chewich now. Wide to Bouchoir. Back to Chewich. Line being held at the 18-yard line. Given away. Obregon here. He goes down under pressure from Adrian Dispay. Dave, these last 10 minutes or so, we've seen FC Tulsa start to force it a bit more. They get the ball in. They have players in the box just kind of dumping those balls into the top of the 18 or trying to find something off of the knockdown. And FC Tulsa is so good with the ball at their feet and that combination play. Obviously, as things push on, you want players higher up the pitch and you want to get those 
direct balls involved if needed, but hasn't been successful thus far. Now, Ronald Rodriguez has gone down. He stretched out his right leg and he's in a bit of trouble here. Harvard Athletic within their rights to play on. Ronald Rodriguez gets to his feet, holding his left hamstring there. Kembo Kibato's won this ball. Just hope that Ronald Rodriguez is okay. De Costa lays it off to Machuca. Bradley Bouchoir now will have to go back. And he'll go all the way back to Austin Wormel. Adrian Dispay, central. Goes wide to the left-hand side. Ronald Rodriguez. Johnny Fennick warming up in the background in case Ronald Rodriguez needs help. De Costa again, not quite on the same wavelength with Dario Suarez there. Remains 1-0 to Huffle Athletic. Ariel Martinez's goal in the 20th minute, separating the two sides in a must-win game for both teams. Kibato. De Costa did well to get it out to Bouchoir. Machuca now. Up against Gadula. Machuca into the box. Can he pull it back? He certainly does. But Moja Dama was there to foil the danger. And the ball could be belted away again. And Dispay just holds off Juan Carlos Obregon. And forward they come again. FC Tulsa. Now, is there drama in store in this last 11 and a half minutes? Plus anything that the referee chooses to add on. Here's Kembo Kibato, one of the FC Tulsa men of the match. Here's De Costa runs into a bit of trouble. Machuca will get there. And I think he's going to let this one go for a corner. Real chance again, Annabeffa, for the likes of Adrian Dispay to come up from the back. FC Tulsa continuing to dominate in possession, but in the run of play have not been able, as we've talked about all evening, put the pieces together. But an opportunity here off of a corner kick, a set piece for FC Tulsa. De Costa will do the honors as Petar Chuic on the outside for the knockdown and players in the box. De Costa goes to the far post. It's over Adrian Dispay, but he's got Peter Chuic here on the corner of the box. Chuic chips it to the far post. Chested down inside the box. De Costa's in there. Was there a handball? And the referee has given FC Tulsa a penalty kick. And this is a very, very big moment in FC Tulsa's season. Now, Dario Suarez, I can tell you, is four from four from the penalty spot in his FC Tulsa career. Anna Beffa, let's have a look at this. Is it a handball? There's not too many complaints from the Hartford Athletic uh, defenders. Uncontested referee in a good position. You can see the frustration there from Odell Bourgeois with his hand up. Referee calls the handball after that play. Moja Dumrit was with the handball. Here's Dario Suarez with the responsibility. Donovan Ricketts looks on. Here is Suarez, comes up, scores! FC Tulsa are back on level terms, and there's 10 minutes to go. And in the context of the season, that is a vital kick from Dario Suarez. He is now five from five from the penalty spot. He does not miss. It's FC Tulsa one, half an athletic one. Dario Suarez, ice in his veins in these moments for FC Tulsa. Dave, you mentioned it, so much on the line from the penalty spot this late in the game. And none other than Dario Suarez, he's been perfect from the spot for FC Tulsa all season, converts when needed. And we'll get another look here at the replay. Odell can't get there in time. Suarez generates enough power, places it perfectly. You could tell when he walked up the confidence and FC Tulsa back in this game on, Dave, with just about 10 minutes left. And Anna, if you are Donovan Ricketts, you're not going to settle for 1-1. One, one. You're going to go for the three points. We could be in for a very exciting eight and a half minutes. Hold on to your hats, folks, at home here on ESPN+. Plus. And also here in Tulsa on My41, here's Epps here. Suarez took his eye off the ball. Balls goes back to Ertl from Tulu. Underneath this, Bradley Bouchoir has worked hard again for the FC Tulsa cause. Here's Kembo Kibato. Can FC Tulsa force the three points here? De Costa tries to go round former teammate Moja Dama, who's just given away the penalty. 
Barrera, who's had a slightly quieter second half. Here's Budadi. Half Athletic will try to possess the football here. That is a pullback from Ron Rodriguez, who is struggling. The referee's going to let things go on. I think Rodriguez will have to come off the field. Good block from Adrian Dispay from Budadi, and I think Ronald Rodriguez will also get a yellow card at the next stoppage. Budadi still with the ball here. Nutmegs Epps. Barrera brings in Bruitt there now. Goodala wide on the left-hand side, wearing the number three shirt. Back to Bruitt. Bruitt easily finds... Apollon, Apollon, good ball into the box, easy header, what a save from Wormel, and turned in by one Carlos Obregon. Seven and a half minutes gone, is that the winning goal for Hartford Athletic? FC Tulsa will need to respond. It's FC Tulsa one, Hartford Athletic two. Those five minutes after a goal scored are so crucial in a game. FC Tulsa switches off Hartford Athletic takes advantage great ball played in the initial save from Austin Wormel not enough and Aubergon Jr. there to put that one away and what might be the game winning goal here for Hartford Athletic Johnny Fennick comes on for Ronald Rodriguez Ray Reed will be inwardly delighted he puffs his cheeks he knows now that there's a big six and a half minutes to go Gabby Torres also comes on in another attacking move from FC Tulsa. Can they respond again? Torres it is, he's just come on. Gabby Torres, the Brazilian 15 starts this year. He's had to be content for a place on the bench. He was in the team of the week three weeks in a row, that man in frame two weeks, two, three and four. And now we've got an injury, the referee is Waving on the trainees, stop the watch, of course. Anna Beffer, can FC Tulsa turn this around? Or do Hartford Athletic have a famous away win? It would only be their second win away from home. Let's have a look. The ball in from Apollon. There's that, a good save. And that's what you want from a goal scorer to poach that goal close in. Great awareness from Aubergon Jr. to close that one in. But if you're FC Tulsa, have to be aware of your players, aware that the ball might pop out. Austin Wormel with the initial save. But great play from Hartford Athletic. They immediately respond after FC Tulsa converts on the penalty kick. That is Eunice Budadi who's getting some attention there. Looks in a bit of discomfort. So... FC Tulsa bringing on Gabby Torres. Suarez got the goal in the 81st minute, but it's quickly been turned around in the 83rd by one Carlos Obregon. 2-1, there's Epps and Bouchoir having a discussion. A big, big five minutes now in both of these team seasons here at One Oak Field, where we are used to seeing late goals. Budadi, of course, will need to leave the field. Hartford Athletic temporarily down to 10. And Dave, just a reminder for those watching, you mentioned the late goals. FC Tulsa scored 13 goals this season past the 75th minute. So this home crowd, no stranger to the late magic from FC Tulsa. Johnny Fennick into the box, headed away. Where's it going to fall? It's going to come to Adrian Dispay. He tries one, comes off the leg of a defender, corner. Fennec goes forward. Nobody back now for FC Tulsa. And now we've got another half an athletic player down. We are going to see quite a lot of Tulsa Tech stoppage time tonight. And in fact, there's just a little bit of concern here from the referee because they're worried that there's some time wasting. But I, I, I always think that, you know, the referee's got the watch. He's going to add the time on. I don't think anybody needs to get involved. If the player's injured, he's down. If he's not injured, well, the referee's still got the watch anyway. Exactly. Important for FC Tulsa just to keep their head, not focus on the referee, not focus on the calls, just control what they can control. And what that is at this moment is making the most of this upcoming corner kick by Dario Suarez. And if you're Hartford Athletic, you're content with the stoppage of play, the stop start, the stop go flow disruption from FC Tulsa this late in the game. They're very okay with that, especially after finding that potential game-winning goal. 
don't want to concede anything late and content to let the clock run out. June the 18th, Hartford Athletic fans will remember a 3-0 win at Atlanta United 2. That's the only time that they've won away from home this season. Are they on the verge of a famous away win here? Or FC Tulsa, do they have something in the last two and a half minutes plus the board, which you think now has got to be more than five minutes? Referee just saying attention, and you're going to have to leave the field. Corner to FC Tulsa. Plenty of players in and around the box. Everybody back, of course, for Hartford Athletic. Donovan Ricketts can just look on and wonder what's in store in these last few minutes. Drama here at One Oak Field. Ball into the box. Keeper's there. It's going to come here to Peter Chewitz on the far side. Chewitz now onto his left foot. Drives it into the box. The legs of uh, Tulu there getting that one away. And now Kembo Kibato back in his own half. Back to Austin Wormel. Wormel drives it forward. There's a foul. Marcus Epps is fouled. And now another Hartford Athletic player goes down. And Bradley Bouchoir is going to leave that one to the referee. Now Johnny Fennick comes along for a helping hand. And again, I think the referee is saying, I've got the watch. I've got the watch stopped. You can kind of understand it with Hartford Athletic. They must be desperate for this win away from home. Apollon it is, who's on his knees, getting up now. Darius Suarez is going to plant this one in. Only Noah Powder back. You just need the ball to drop if you are an FC Tulsa player, just to somebody's feet inside that box. Anna Beffra here is Suarez. Good ball into the box, header away by Jadama, ball still loose, Epps is in there, ball's going to come out here to Johnny Fennick, can he get the ball in, he can, it's a great ball in, where's it going to fall now, Suarez is battling for the ball, back in from Dispay, header away, and belted away in the end, by half an athletic, only as far as Powder, Powder has done well to get the ball inside the centre circle here now, the clock ticks round to 89 and a half minutes. Ball into the box here. There's Gabby Torres. It comes off a defender. It's another corner. And FC Tulsa doing every single thing they can here, Anna. FC Tulsa continuing to press. Every player pl trying to play their role from an offensive front, earning a corner kick here. But these are the moments that FC Tulsa have to capitalize on. Dario Suarez needs a good ball in for FC Tulsa to have a chance. Here's Suarez from the right-hand side. Good ball. Ertl gets cut. double palm there. Machuca here. Will it go away for another corner? Yes, it will. Suarez will try again. Big palm away from the German goalkeeper, Yannick Ertl. Here's Suarez into the box. Flicked away again. We're going to have six minutes of Tulsa Tech stoppage time. Enroll today at tulsatech.edu. Now the referee's going to talk to the goalkeeper and say you cannot take too much time off the clock. What a big six minutes of Tulsa Tech stoppage time. This is Anna Beffer in, in the context of FC Tulsa season. And of course, again, I say if you're a Hartford Athletic um, fan looking in, you're desperate to see the clock run down the next six minutes quickly. If you're Hartford Athletic, this is going to be an extremely long six minutes, but FC Tulsa desperate to get forward and find a shot on frame and into the back of the net. They've obviously pushed a ton of players high, leaving themselves exposed, but at this point, it's they have to find an equalizer to put themselves back in this game as another player down, Dave. Frustrating foul from Johnny Fennick. The man down is the second goal scorer, Obregon. He's hurt his left shoulder. Referee sprays the line. Machuca gets the ball, places it kindly for the away side here. We might well take the ball into the corner here. Rashawn Daly is there. So's Barrera. And FC Tulsa would just be desperate to get this ball and get it up the other end of the field. Half an athletic will go into the corner. Daly, the substitute with Machuca. Daly goes to ground. Dispay. Still in that corner, gets it to Powder. Powder's got to go forward here. Wins the throw in. The hard working Barrera has actually won the throw in for his team. Boys, Two 1 the score. Half an athletic turned this around very, very quickly. 
having been pegged back by Dario Suarez penalty two minutes later and it was Obregon with what could be the winner here's Chewich of course if you're an FC Tulsa fan you're desperate that wasn't the winner Suarez goes to ground fairly says the referee Obregon now they want to keep possession here do Hartford Athletic ball chipped into the middle Obregon on the halfway line Rudadi has had a steady game at right back Dispay has had a good game at the back for FC Tulsa Chewich on as a second half substitute for Eric Bird now Johnny Fennick who had to come on for the injured Ronald Rodriguez Dispay centre circle desperation times now for FC Tulsa ball over the top did it glance off the head of the defender yes it did another corner to FC Tulsa and you wonder whether it's just time for Austin Wormel to even go up there Annabeffa it just might be Dario Suarez again will take this one off of the right foot in swinger and FC Tulsa with plenty of players in the box on the outside as well waiting for that knockdown sixth corner of the match Suarez raises his right arm into the danger area there's a header from the far post and it's going to go over and the referee looks at his assistant and they've gone with a goal kick and Hartford Athletic fans can breathe a huge sigh of relief and again if you're an FC Tulsa fan you're desperate for the ball back there's Ertl who we use all his experience he's had three clean sheets this season came into this game with 48 saves from his 12 appearances hasn't really been tested an awful lot tonight the German you would say Anna no he hasn't and it's something we noted at halftime that didn't really change a ton in the second half for FC Tulsa the shots on goal were lacking they didn't really challenge Yannick Odell in goal and that's been the difference maker so far Hartford Athletic has been able to be efficient with their chances in front of goal and right now that's the difference maker McQueen two loop Gabby Torres steps in, but it's going to be a throw-in to Eunice Budadi. Budadi will just leave this one for Tom Bruitt. Bruitt from Liverpool in England. Youth career at Liverpool and Middlesbrough. Noah Powder has been pulled back. Daly will have to get away from the ball. Here's Austin Wormel who you feel has just got to go long here. Machuca waits underneath this one. Is Machuca, he's up there kind of on his own a little bit. Chewich with an intelligent ball here to Bouchoir, but he's been dispossessed. Johnny Fenix there, thankfully, from the FC Tulsa cause. Desperation now. Dispay's got to be quick. Dispay will continue his run forward. Powder goes wide to Torres, back to Powder. Chewich, good ball over the top here inside the box. It's display. It's going to be yet another corner. FC Tulsa, now you feel, Anna, this could well be their last chance to get something from this game. It just might be. Dispay's done a great job in these last few minutes trying to get forward, trying to keep possession and put those balls in behind for FC Tulsa. And he earns himself a corner here with Dario Suarez. To the far post. In comes Bradley Bouchoir across goal off the line. Kibato now, Chewich, Powder, Powder out wide, Dario Suarez back to Powder, Powder now, trying to go into the box, headed away, and the referee brings proceedings to an end, half an athletic have come into one oak field, they've won it by two goals to one, only their second away win of the season, and for FC Tulsa, huge, huge disappointment. Ray Reid absolutely delighted. There's plenty of hugs around former half an athletic man there, Gabby Torres. Ray Reid, for the second time this season, sees a win on the road. Anna Beffer, very quickly, FC Tulsa will have to pick themselves up now for Saturday. FC Tulsa has to put this in the rearview mirror quickly. Focus on the game Saturday. Obviously, there are things in this match they could have done differently, should have done differently, but they can't change that now. Credit Hartford Athletic. They came into a tough environment, were very efficient in front of goal, able to get the two goals and ultimately the victory and their second road win of the season. 
Donovan Ricketts, I'm sure, will put things into perspective, as he always does when he talks to the press, and he will know it's a quick turnaround. FC Tulsa back home against Loudoun, but they've gone down by two goals to one. I'll tell you what, let's go to break, and then we'll pick up this one as Bouchoir and Jadama discuss tonight's game. We'll be back after the break to finish this broadcast out. It's finished FC Tulsa 1, Hartford Athletic 2. Summertime is back at Osage Casino Hotel Tulsa, and we have the perfect getaway for you. Cool off in our spacious freeform pool, grab your favorite drink and chill at the poolside bar, or relax and unwind in a cozy private cabana. Just steps away are tempting restaurants, live entertainment, and a world-class casino gaming experience. At Osage Casino Hotel Tulsa, your place to stay and relax. Here at Titan Sports Complex, we offer a variety of sports and training facilities for all ages. Whether you play soccer, basketball, football, or volleyball, Titan Sports Complex has it all. With over 11 outdoor fields, a state-of-the-art indoor training facility, and a health club, Titan has exactly what you need to meet your fitness goals. Visit titansportscomplex.com to learn more about all of the amenities and options available at Titan. Titan Sports Complex, the official training, strength, and conditioning partner of FC Tulsa. in for the last time to One Oak Field. If you're a Hartford Athletic fan, you are so pleased with your team's performance tonight. They led twice. They win the game by two goals to one. It has put a huge dent in FC Tulsa's playoff ambitions. Anna Beffer alongside me. Let's uh, get into the highlights of this disappointing night for FC Tulsa. It was credit Hartford Athletic. They did what they needed to do from an offensive front, and it started off with a great run from Joel Johnson, who picks out Ariel Martinez, the veteran player, former FC Tulsa man, doesn't want to celebrate out of respect, but a great shot from him past Austin Warmel, and that's what got things going for Hartford Athletic. Credit FC Tulsa dominated most of the possession but couldn't convert until this moment. A handball from Moja Dama and Hartford Athletic gives up a penalty kick, and Dario Suarez walks up very calm and confident, puts that one away for FC Tulsa, and it was game on, Dave. FC Tulsa, you felt the fans lift a bit of a spark at One Oak Field. Dario Suarez quick to put the ball back on the spot and get things going again, but just a few minutes later, Hartford Athletic responds. Great initial save from Austin Warmel. The ball in creating some danger, and then what an unbelievable header from Austin. Obregon, but the follow-up is what did it. Obregon in a great position to score that goal in Hartford Athletic. Ultimately, that was the game winner, Dave, and the difference maker tonight. Certainly was. As we look at the full match stats, we can see that FC Tulsa really piled on the pressure. Look at that, 24 shots to 13. They outdid their visitors with possession. The shots on target, though, importantly, were with Hartford Athletic. So, you know, it was not for the want of trying for FC Tulsa, but they'll be, they will be disappointed with this result, of course. They will. The effort was there. You could tell the idea was there, but just throughout the evening, the small technical moments, that final pass, the first touch, that final shot, not able to execute in those moments. And it's frustrating from an FC Tulsa perspective because you've seen them do it time and time again. They had a great performance on Saturday, but not able to carry it over into the midweek game, but have to have a quick turnaround, Dave, Saturday, focus on what they can control and to try to get those next three points. It's hard for Athletic, not out of the playoff race yet mathematically, but they've done themselves some good tonight with this victory. They certainly have, and let's put this performance from Hartford Athletic into perspective. They are one of the better teams with respect to other opposition that we have seen at One Oak Field. 
Harford Athletic came in, played to their strengths. They were able to get the ball wide. Joel Johnson started things off, was very dangerous on that right side. And Hartford Athletic responded after the penalty kick. They were disciplined defensively, forcing FC Tulsa to try to be creative in that final third. FC Tulsa ultimately not up to the challenge this evening, couldn't couldn't find the back of the net, and Hartford Athletic comes in, takes those three points. Ada Beffert, thank you so much for your company here tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will do it all again on Saturday with uh, FC Tulsa against Loudoun United. We have to say it again, it's got to be a must-win game. Congratulations to Ari Martinez against his old employers. Dario Suarez it was who got the penalty. We finish tonight with FC Tulsa 1, Harford Athletic 2. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League Championship cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League Championship.